Hey everybody, thanks for joining White Dog Outdoors and another video in our fly tying series. Today we're gonna to be tying the Olive Paradigon. It's gonna have a hot spot, a little bit of flash. Um, it's been a killer fly and I'm really happy with this one right now. So we're gonna show you guys how to tie that. As with all of our fly tying videos, you guys know we give away a half dozen flies. So in order to take part in that giveaway, be a subscriber on the channel, give this video a thumbs up, and leave a comment down below letting me know what kind of things you want to see. This fly in particular came from your suggestions. We had a lot of people saying they wanted to see the Olive Paradigone, so I started playing with different versions of it and fishing them, and this is where I've landed so far um, on what I'm, what I'm liking right now. So we're going to get into tying that. Um, but definitely take part in the giveaway. Uh, we enjoy doing those. It's a way for us to connect with a lot of people out there. And um, we get a lot of pictures back from people uh, who are catching fish on the flies that, that we're giving them. So it's pretty cool. But uh, at the end of this video, we're going to be announcing two winners um, for previous videos. So we did the Black Zebra Paradigone was our last fly tying video. We're going to announce that winner at the end. Um, and that person will win a half dozen flies the, of the Zebra Paradigones. And then we're going to be giving away a white dog snapback, and that came from the last video that we did in our Euronymphing series that was Euronymphing on a budget. And so we're going to give that away at the end. So stay tuned until the end, see if you won. Um, take part in this giveaway by leaving a comment, being a subscriber, and giving us a thumbs up. But let's get to tying the Olive Paradigon. All right, so let's get to tying our Olive Paradigon. This is going to be an Olive Paradigon with a little bit of flash and a hot spot. Um, but let's talk a little bit about Paragones in general. So a Paragone is going to be a smaller profile fly. Um, what's great about a Paragone is it's a way to get a small fly down deep because it's not going to be real buggy. It's going to be really thin bodied. We're going to use an, um, a UV resin on top of it and it's going to really seal everything in and it's going to make it sink like a pebble would. Right, there's no resistance against the water as it tries to sink. So it's going to help us get a smaller fly down deeper. So if you ever go in your rivers and you flip rocks, you'll see you know, a bunch of different size flies. Um, the, these paradigons really help imitate some of the smaller flies that honestly a lot of the trout will key on in summer. A lot of times they're, they're feeding on, on these really small flies. So paradigons can be really, really great for that. This particular paradigone is going to be an olive color. We're going to be using olive thread. We're going to put a little bit of flash on it, but you know, as you're flipping those rocks and looking at those at those at those flies, a lot of them are darker colors. There's some olives. Have you ever heard of a blue wing olive? Um, those are very common flies across pretty much most rivers, and that's why this particular fly works kind of universally well across rivers. Is it can imitate that what they call betis or blue wing olive. So. I think this is definitely a, a great fly to use. You can tie it with a hot spot, you can tie it without the hot spot. Uh, I tie it both ways, but typically I tie it with the hot spot. I do find I probably catch more fish with that hot spot, it helps the fish find it a little bit. But why don't we go ahead and get started with this? Um, so, first of all, the hook that I'm using is a size 16 jig hook. Um, this is a 60 degree jig hook from Saber. This is the 5230. Um, I like these guys just because they're a local company and um, I get them from the Fly Shack, which again is a, a local company. So, But any 60 degree jig hook um, is good. There's a bunch of different jig hooks you can use for that out there. I am going to pair this with a slotted tungsten bead of a 2.8 millimeter in size. Um, a slotted tungsten bead works really well for these paradigons. You see me tie on a lot of my other flies that I don't use tongue, I don't use the slotted tungsten beads a lot because I'm using lead that I push up into the bead itself. And so I tend to use a lot of countersunk beads for that. But in this case, I'm not using lead on this body and the, 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 the bead is going to seat much better using a tungsten jig if I'm not using any kind of lead. So um, will be no lead on this and we're going with a 2.8 millimeter slotted tungsten bead. If you're used to seeing beads in not millimeters but inches, a 2.8 millimeter equivalates basically to a 764 um, inch tungsten bead. Okay. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started with this guy. We'll get this one out of here. And I've actually had people ask me, how do you load um, a tungsten, like a slotted bead onto a hook. And so I'll just go through that a little bit, but um, on a, you're not gonna be able to see this, it's so small. Um, but on a slotted bead, there, there's, a, there's a small hole and there's a slot. We're basically gonna take the small hole, which I, if I can find, and we're gonna slide that right onto the hook itself. And then if you rotate it, 
so that the slot is angled right, it's gonna slide right onto the hook. So just like that, hook is, bead is on. I'll take this out and I'll flip it over. Um, get that in there a little bit better. <clears throat> All right, and now we're gonna situate it so that the slot, that the bead is sitting right down. If I didn't situate it right, it would, it would wanna do this and it wouldn't wanna go all the way up. So I just wanna slide it so that the slot is along the bottom and it allows the bead to sit right over the top. Okay, get down in there. Gotta rotate you again. Come on, there you go. All right, to start this fly off, we are gonna be starting with a, uh, an olive thread. This is actually a yellow olive. Um, I just think it stands out slightly better. It's a little bit lighter color. Um, when at the end of the day, this is if you don't use the holographic material that I'll put on over it, it comes out kind of dark. So I like the slightly yellower thread, uh, makes it stand out maybe a little bit more, but this is a UTC Ultra thread um, <clears throat> in 70 denier. I love these 70 deniers. I have basically restocked all of my threads in the 70 denier. Um, I think that a perfect weight um, and make up for a lot of these nymphs that I tie. So we're gonna start, the, what's great about the denier threads is they will lay flat on the hook. So when you're tying something small, like, like these paradigons, they lie flat on the hook and help you create a smoother body. So we're gonna start by just building a little bit of a base behind this bead to get that bead situated in place just a little bit. All right, that's the only time I'm putting on a lot of wraps on this fly. All right, we're gonna trim the tag in. A lot of times you'll see people put a little bit of a super glue to secure that bead. I just, it's a step I really don't bother with. Um, I'm going to pull the thread out. I'm going to spin it just a little bit clockwise or counterclockwise just so I can kind of get it flattened out. And I'm going to coat the shank of the hook down to where I'm going to put my tailing material in, which is right about here. Okay. Now for the tailing material, Oh, you see on a lot of my other flies, I use pheasant tail for my tailing material. However, pheasant tail is a very webby, um, buggy tailing material. And on a small fly like this, it's gonna keep it from being able to sink as well. So we use Coque de Leon um, on these flies. Anything that's small profile and needs to sink more easily, look how fine these fibers are. They're great tailing material um, for these paradigons like this. So, um, you know, I always forget to tell you this. Um, all of the materials that I use will be linked down in the description. Um, you know, I get them from various places. Um, I like to support certain people because certain people uh, were instrumental in teaching me. Um, and so I like to support those places, but I'll, I'll link those places and, and the materials down below. But we're gonna start with tailing material with some Coq de Leon. I have a feather already here. All right, and we're not gonna take too many fibers. We're only gonna take about three fibers. So I've, I got this one, I've got three fibers pulled out. I'm gonna grab them here. Come with my scissors, snip them at the base. And there it goes. All right, so I don't want these sticking off too, too far. Um, a lot of times people like them to be about a one, one shank of the hook. Um, <clears throat> I'll go just maybe like right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab these with my left hand. I'm gonna pinch them down like this. We're gonna take the thread in between my fingers like this, and we're just gonna pull down a little bit and that's gonna help secure them in place, okay? Now, when I tip it up like this, you should see that they should be pretty well in line with the hook. Not that it's gonna matter a ton. <laughs> I'm gonna go back over these a little bit with a nice flat thread a little bit ways up, and then we're gonna snip these guys out as best we can, as close as we can. All right, so we'll just do an even thread. I'm getting a little bunched, I'm gonna spin a little bit. Lay it out nice and flat, okay. Now, if you wanted this to be less flashy, so like in the one that I just showed you guys, I'll try to hold it up here, I've got a, a material that's, that's kind of flashy. Um, I'll tie these both ways. If you wanted to tie it more natural and not as flashy, just build a very slight taper here in your thread and do not do the next step. Um, I am gonna build just a very slight, I don't like the way that thread, I'm gonna unwrap it a little bit. Want it to lay out. Very, very slight taper. I'm gonna go back just a little ways and build that up. I wanna lay it flat again. Just a very slight taper here. That is decent, All right? 
Now I do like um, to have a little more flash in my flies. Um, and so I am going to use, there's a ton of Paragon bodies out there. This is one that I got from the Tactical Fly Fisher guys. Um, I'll show the other side of it because it'll give you the details of it. And again, I'll link this down in the description to get this under control here. But this is basically a Paragon body. Um, this one, I don't know, it's called Paragon's body, but it's the PBF 34. It's just a translucent material. It's got a slight olive color to it. Um, you know, you can play with these body materials as much as you want. Other materials I've used are just the straight Vivas. Um, it's kind of like a pearl. That makes it a, lot, a little more flashy though. And then there's a couple other ones. If I wanted more of a red tint, I can use a couple more of these red bodies and like a little more pearl with a little bit of pink or whatever. So you can, you can really change the look and feel of that fly simply by changing either the thread color or the body material that you're using. And then essentially these are gonna be tied almost the same. <laughs> um, it's just a matter of what materials you're gonna use. Um, one thing I will caution, I tried some materials. I thought these were gonna be amazing to use because um, they just looked so good. Um, and I tried to use these and they fall apart like crazy. It's almost impossible to tie a fly with these. I would not recommend using these. Um, so don't use those. Use something a little stronger, uh, one of the Paragon bodies, like something like this, okay? Anyway, I have a piece of this cut um, and I'm just gonna tie this in up toward the head. We're gonna bring it back, okay? So I'm gonna bring this back up to the front. I'm a little curved on this. We're gonna try to tie this in, if you could see that. I'm just gonna do a loose wrap here. Just wanna catch it in. Come on, there we go. And we're gonna take that down the length of the body. All right, and we're gonna take interspersed wraps. I'm not doing tight wraps here because I don't wanna build too much body. Okay, and I'm literally just wrapping up this body with this translucent material, doing touching turns. It's super small, so it's hard to see, but touching turns for as much as you can see anyway. And it's gonna add a translucent, it's gonna add a little bit of flat, a lot of flash actually to that body, especially when you get out in the sunlight, but it's allowing some of that olive color to come through from the thread. All right, so we're just gonna tie that off. Get one more wrap there, back behind, and we're gonna cut this material out. So now I've got my olive body with a little bit of flash to it. Um, and now I'm gonna tie this off. We are done with our olive thread, so I'm just gonna do a quick whip finish, a couple of turns, and we are finished with that olive thread. Cut that guy out of there. Everything we want to do as clean as possible on a Paragon. Not the end of the world if it gets a little messy, guys, but as clean as possible on these Paragons just because they're such a small profile fly. And don't put on more wraps than you need to in terms of the in terms of the body, typically. Some people will make a thick Paragon. I think the purpose of a Paragon is to, is to get a small bodied fly down deep. All right, so we're gonna take, let me show you this too. This again is another Ultra Thread 70. This is a fluorescent orange. Um, I like a hot spot, so I'm gonna add a hot spot. So I'm just gonna tie in this orange thread. I'm gonna give it a bit of a hot spot. I'm gonna build that up just a little bit. Cut this out of here as clean as I can. I'm gonna add maybe a couple more wraps, just build that up. And then we're gonna whip finish this guy too. And these hot spots can really help the fish see the fly in certain types of water. So I do like them. Accent is it X as a, um, an attractor for those fish. So we cut this again as close as we can. Okay, the tie, the fly is tied. Now we're going to put the, um, the UV resin on top. And so I prefer a thin UV resin. Um, I've got this one from the Fly Shack because when I was buying these, there was nothing left anywhere else but the Fly Shack guys, and this stuff has been good. The only thing I would say is that the applicator on this is very big, <laughs> not so great. So little at a time, okay? We're not gonna put a big gob here. I basically just wanna touch it. I'm gonna start touching it right here where, oh, that's way more than I usually have. That came out pretty heavy on that one. Um, we're gonna use a little bodkin to try and spread that around. So 
Um, I'm going to take some of that off, actually. That was way more than what I used to have. Used to having. I don't know why that came out so heavy. And we're basically just going to spread it around and try to coat the fly. And I took quite a bit off there, but you can see what it does is it actually fills in the slot on the tungsten bead too. So that's always good. We want to fill in that slot because I'm going to put a little wing case on here afterwards and I don't want it soaking up. All right, we're going to go back and hit this again, but I want to just get a very thin layer started with this. So we're going to hit a UV light on it. So this is just a loon UV light. Any UV light is fine. And we're going to zap this guy. And when we zap the UV resin with this light, it's going to harden right up. And that is about all it takes. I do see when I hit that light, I do see one tiny little thread here. It's just one strand from a piece of thread that I'm going to cut out. Okay. So anyway, UV light, it's nice and hard now. Now I want to add, we're going to go back through on this again with the, the UV resin, just one tiny coat, but I want to add a little bit of wing case. Now, if you don't want to do this, that's fine. It'll help the, the, uh, the hot spot stand out a little bit more actually. And when I do this wing case, I'm going, um, this is a, um, this is a solar res UV color resin. This is the black one. I'll link that down below too. I am just going to go a very tiny tap right on top of the actual bead. So you build up a little bubble on top of the bead. And I don't want that to go down into the thread too much because I still want I still want my hot spot there. So we're going to hit that with the UV light and harden that guy up. So basically covering up the tungsten slot there and the head of the bead. But I'm leaving a little bit of that hot spot showing. Okay. So we've zapped that with the UV light. We are good. Well, um, this fly is actually fine. Um, I, I ended up taking a little bit of that resin off. I want to take a very light touch of resin this time. Just touch it to the body and try to build a little bit of a even body with that. And so what's important is you spin this around. It's nice to have a rotary vice when you're doing this because you can spin them around a little bit, but try to evenly spread that UV resin. It's looking pretty good. I want to hit that. Just keep spinning it so it doesn't move around on me. I'm just going to zap it with the UV light and this fly is going to be done. Um, if you don't have the black uh, UV resin, um, you can use a fingernail polish, but what it means is you're going to have to set them aside to dry. Um, I found that I just wanted the UV resin. I can zap them out really quick. Um, I like it way better. Um, and this is the Olive Paradigone with the hot spot. It's got a little bit of, it's got definitely a little bit of um, flash in it. Again, always with these flies is adapt them to, to what you think is going to work for your stream. And so at this particular one, maybe you take off the flash if you want something a little more natural. Maybe take off the hot spot if you want a little something more natural. But um, I think this one right here is a pretty good killer fly. I love it on a dropper. Um, in shallow, thin water, um, it's great on a point too. Um, you can oversize these beads. One thing I didn't mention is I did buy some bigger beads, the 3.3 millimeter beads. Um, this basically equals a 1 8 inch bead, a tungsten bead. You can oversize the beads on these if you want to make them heavier. Um, they look a little funky, but man, a lot of people tie them like that and they definitely work. So don't be afraid to go a little bit bigger on the bead if you want something a little bit heavier. I tie them in various sizes. Um, and I'll, I'll definitely tie some with, with that 3.3 millimeter bead. All right, so this is the Olive Paradigone with a hot spot and a little bit of flash. It's definitely a killer fly, one that I definitely like, um, typically on a dropper for me, but in skinny, smaller water, I can definitely put it on a point as well, especially if I put on that bigger bead, it can definitely be a point fly. So anyway, hope you guys have enjoyed this fly. We have more fly tying coming your way. Um, I know people have asked for soft tackles. I'm going to be working on some of those, maybe some more paradigons. Um, people have asked for a lot of different kinds of flies. So we're going to be, we're going to be doing those throughout the year. And as we do these for every video that we do, we do a giveaway of a half dozen flies. So just, you know, like this video, be a subscriber in the channel, leave a comment down below, letting me know what kinds of things you guys want to see. And that's going to enter you into the giveaway. And we'll announce that in our next fly tying video. But let's get to the giveaway announcement for the last fly tying video, which was the Black Zebra Paradigm. And we're giving away a white dog snapback hat um, from the last Urine Nymphing series video. So let's get to those. Thanks for joining us. Let's get to the drawings. 
All right, so let's do the drawing for the black zebra paratagones first. We have 201 participants in this particular giveaway. And let's find out who our winner is. And the winner of the paratagones is, I'm not even sure how to say that, but that's well, have a great day. Um, I'll reach out to you and uh, we can work on getting those flies out to you, but congratulations. All right, and then moving on to the giveaway for the white dog snapback from the Euronymphing video, uh, Euronymphing on a budget. And we have 190 participants in this drawing. So thank you everybody for all the awesome comments on this, helping everybody out, really appreciated that. Um, but let's go ahead and see who our winner is for the snapback. All right, and the winner of the white dog snapback is Nathaniel Choate. Um, and it looks like we had a pretty cool conversation here about some stuff. But um, anyway, congratulations, Nathaniel, on winning the White Dog Snapback. I'll be in touch. There's a couple of colors you can choose from. I'll let you pick which one you want, and then I'll get that out to you. All right, and thank you, everybody, for participating in these giveaways. They're always really fun to do. All right, well, congratulations to our winners. Um, I'll be in contact to get your prizes out to you. And again, to take part in the giveaway for the Olive Paradigon, uh, just be a subscriber on the channel, give this video a thumbs up, and leave a comment down below letting me know what kind of things you want to see. You guys give me a lot of great ideas, and I listen to you guys all the time. The other thing I'll say is, as you're tying these flies and as you're catching fish, and if you're a winner and you receive the flies and you catch fish, I absolutely love getting pictures. I've gotten so many pictures of people catching fish on the flies that we either tied and gave to them as a giveaway or that they have tied their own based on the patterns that, that we've shown you guys. So that's always really rewarding. Definitely continue to do that. But thank you all so much for the support. We have so much more coming, a lot more in the Urine and Fing series. We're doing a, a few Breaking Down the Water series. I have one on a particular run that I've already recorded. I'm going to be doing a pocket water area this weekend. Um, we got the fly selection video coming. I'm going to be tying my leaders. We got a whole bunch of stuff coming. Plus, we're going to be doing a bunch more fly tying throughout the year. So I definitely hope you guys will join us for all that. And uh, hey, that's it for now. We will see you guys soon.